Okay, so here. we're at Freedom Park, and we are going to go hassle some people to figure out um, if they know who Roger Spear is. So there's like some fratty high schoolers. This could be the film. Pussy light. Okay. <laughs> so let's go. Grab my boy. He's in. Okay, okay. Survey. Hey guys, uh, do you guys mind being on film for a second? I just want to ask you oh, yeah. like two yeah. questions. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay, we gonna introduce yourselves. I'm Jay. <laughs> okay. I'm Miller. I'm Max. Daniel. Okay. <laughs> Sam. Okay, guys. Let's do you on. guys know oh who Roger Sperry is? No idea. No. Anybody? No. no. Can you guess who he might be or what he did? Does he make Sperrys? That's a good guess. What That's else on. might he do? Man, make shoes. Roger Sperry. I don't think yeah. he has anything to do with shoes. Like yeah, I don't either. Well, I'll give you a hint. I'm a UNCW psychology student. Okay, so, so he's a psychologist? Maybe. Oh. Okay. So, so y'all have never heard of him. Have y'all no. ever taken a psychology course? Yes. yes. Yeah. And he wasn't introduced in the course? No. no. Okay. Well, that's all I wanted to know. Cool. So, <laughs> thanks, guys. Uh -huh. yeah. You'll You're be welcome. in the credits. Hey guys, would y'all mind being on film for a second to answer a question that I have? I'm a UNCW psychology student. Yes! Okay. I'm getting my grad school in psych, so okay, I totally cool. support this. Cool. Well, do you want to introduce yourselves to the camera? Um, I'm Ashley. I'm Matt. Matt. Hello, I'm Tate. Nice to meet you. Um, I just wanted to ask you guys if you know who Roger Sperry is. I don't. You don't? Nope. Okay. Could you guess who he is? Knowing I'm a psychology student. Who is he a psychologist? Probably, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you're, you're going into your grad student. I'm getting my master's in counseling. Okay, cool. And you've never heard of Roger Spade? I haven't. Okay. And you don't. What no. would you? What do you think he did? Um, I have no idea. Okay. Yeah. What do you? Random guess. Oh, he invented ears. Like, oh, okay. No, he didn't. Behavioral specialist. Okay. Alrighty. Well, cool. That's all. Thank you. Are you, you. going to tell us who he is? Yeah, I will. Hi. Hi. Would you guys mind being on film for a second and ask, answering a question that I have? Sure. Okay. Well, I'm is this a school stand project. Up? It is. Yeah, it's uh, your school. You don't have to stand up. Oh. If you just want to introduce yourself. So. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay. I'm Kathy Collins from Greenville, North Carolina. I'm My Kate. daughter Kate. My son Shane. <laughs> and Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just wanted to ask you guys if you knew who Roger Sperry was. Roger Sperry? I don't know. Yeah, have you ever heard of him? Do we know who Roger Sperry is? Politician. Right. <laughs> Shane, Roger Sperry. <laughs> no, good guess though. No, I was going to say Sperry Topsider is all no, I know. No. Okay. Are you going to tell us who he is? I will. Can you introduce yourself to the camera? Alright, I'm name? Dylan. I'm Lexi. Lexi. Okay, I'm Tate. And I just wanted to know if you guys know who Roger Sperry is, if you've ever heard of him. No. No? What would you guess he did? It can be so random. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, it sounds kind of artsy to me. Artsy? Yeah. <laughs> sounds like a poet. A poet? Okay, cool. Introduce okay. yourself first. Just say your name. Okay, well, I'm Tate. Nice to meet you. Um, I just wanted to know, do you know who Roger Sperry is? Have you ever heard of him? No? What would you guess he did? I can just... Would he be at Parks? Would he be what? I said he'd be at uh, No. <laughs> Alright, there's some intellectuals over here. I'm gonna go hound them. See who Roger is. I think they like each other. Excuse me, ladies. Hi, yeah. I'm doing a film for a psychology class at UNC Wilmington, um, and I was curious if you guys wouldn't mind me filming you asking a couple questions. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Will you introduce yourselves? I'm Jenny. I'm Jackie. Hi, I'm Tate. I'm Tate. Um, I just wanted to ask you, do you know who Roger Sperry is, or have you ever heard of him? Roger Sperry. <laughs> no. No? 
I have no idea. Have you guys ever taken psych courses? I took like an intro level in high school. Did you, but you didn't talk about him at all? No, not at all. What would you guess he did? Huh. <laughs> Anything. He, maybe he invented frogs, you know? <laughs> um, I mean, is he related to psychology? Maybe. <laughs> well, uh, child psychology. Good guess. Children. <laughs> what, what do you say, Jenny? Um, I don't know, some psychologist, I'm guessing. Okay, cool. <laughs> Hi, would you mind being on film for a second and answering a question? I'm a psychology student at uh, UNCW. Sorry, okay. You know, okay, thanks. Excuse me, sir. Could I film you answering a question for me? I'm a psychology student. No, okay. Have a great day. Excuse me. Hi, I'm a psychology student at UNCW doing a film for a project. Would you guys mind being on film answering a question for me? Uh, I don't think so. No? Okay. Well, thank you guys. Sure. Have a good day. Wanna make a change for once in my life. Gonna make it right. So you may be asking, who is this Roger Sperry person? And why would anyone want to know who he is? Well folks, I am here today to tell you exactly that. My name is Tate Weaver, and I'm a psychology student at the University of North Carolina, Wilmington. And I am here today to tell you about the man on everyone's mind, Roger Sperry. Roger Sperry was a mar remarkable young man not only on the personal level, but also on the professional level. He was a neuropsychologist who has left his permanent imprint on the field of psychology. Most notable of Roger Sperry's accomplishments came in 1981, when he won the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine, focusing on brain functions, specifically his split brain research, which I will go into more detail about later. Ironically, prior to taking a history of psychology course in college, I had never heard of Roger Sperry. And after learning a great deal about him, I have a growing desire to inform the rest of the world about this brilliant mind. Roger Walcott Sperry was born on August 20, 1913 in Hartford, Connecticut to parents Francis Bushnell and Florence Sperry of Elmwood, Connecticut. His father was in banking and when Sperry was at the young age of 11 years old, his father passed away and his mother became the assistant of the local high school. Roger Sperry had a brother, Russell Loomis, who was a year younger, and he went into chemistry. A young Sperry collected and raised large American moths in grade school. In high school, he collected and raised live wild pets. In high school and college, he was very much into sports, being a three-letter man in varsity athletics. In his midlife, he continued to joy, enjoy a variety of unique hobbies, including sculpture, figure drawing, and ceramics, as well as his interest in watercolors, sports, American folk dance, boating, fishing, snorkeling, and collecting unusual fossils, including the world's third largest ammonite. You, take my... Close friends and colleagues of Roger Sperry would often describe him as being very determined curious, and resilient, while also being very shy. Most of his career was very serendipitous. It was all about timing. Oh, and how perfect Sperry's was. Roger Sperry attended Oberlin in Ohio, graduating in 1935 with an AB in English. When he was two-thirds of the way through with his major, he took his first psychology course with Professor Ray Stetson. time Stetson fell ill and coincidentally asked Roger Sperry to become his sort of chauffeur driving him to and from school. This is exactly what I mean by serendipitous moments. If it weren't for this psychology course and for his becoming his sort of chauffeur, who knows where Roger Sperry would have gone from there. This is where Sperry's interest in psychology began. He then spent two more years doing graduate work with Professor Ray Stetson at Oberlin. 
Six years of schooling didn't seem to be enough for Roger Sperry, as he spent a third year at Oberlin preparing to transition to the University of Chicago, where he would then study zoology under Professor Paul Weiss. Paul Weiss believed that the brain could revive itself after injury, that it was plastic and bendable, and that it could be trained. Roger Sperry found suspicion in this and decided to conduct his own research. Roger Sperry did research with laboratory animals, specifically rats, to test his hypothesis. He would switch the sensory and motor fibers in the rat's limbs and proceed to shock one of the limbs, which caused the rat to pull away the opposite limb. They were feeling the pain, but they weren't understanding which limb was experiencing the pain. They never learned. Their sweet little paws burned off. This is what led Roger Sperry to believe that nature played a much bigger role than previously thought. Sperry continued to conduct research with other laboratory animals, such as frogs, fish, and cats, in order to support his hypothesis relating to the peripheral nervous system. This is where he started to gain interest in the central nervous system, which led him to do what he was most well known for, his split brain research. He worked with surgeon Joe Bogan, who was responsible for severing the corpus callosum in patients with epilepsy that was so bad that they were willing to go to the last resort. Sperry found interest in this and started to work with these patients post-surgery. And um, I'm gonna go into detail about what he found. It's pretty amazing. Surgeon Joe Bogan would sever the corpus callosum. It was in an attempt to decrease seizure occurrences in epileptic patients. This would cut off the communication between the left and right hemispheres of the brain. However, they were still able to function completely independently of one another. Roger Sperry then worked with these patients doing experiments, and this is where he was able to demonstrate that the left and right hemispheres are specialized in completely different tasks. The left side of the brain is normally specialized in analytical and verbal tasks. The right side of the brain is more visual. It takes care of perception tasks, things relating to music or reading maps. So it's the more artsy side of the brain. Without the help from the right hemisphere, you would be able to read the word pig, for instance, but you wouldn't be able to imagine what it is. I'm going to show you a little experiment that something like what Roger Sperry would have done to better demonstrate what exactly split brain patients were experiencing. A patient with a split brain, when shown an image in his left visual field, will be unable to vocally name what he is seeing. This is because the speech control center is located on the left side of the brain, and the image from the left visual field is sent only to the right side of the brain. Since communication between the two sides of the brain is inhibited, the patient cannot name what the right side of the brain is seeing. Okay, Josh, I'm going to ask that you please continue to look forward. Josh, what are you seeing on your left visual field? I don't know. Okay. Josh, what are you seeing now? A cell phone. A cell phone. Very good. So, based on these experiments that Roger Sperry did, he was able to determine that only 5% of the brain was softwired, while 95% was hardwired. However, the softwired portion was more important. These such things are exactly what Roger Sperry won his Nobel Prize for in 1981. Roger Sperry received his PhD in zoology in 1941 from the University of Chicago. He then moved on to do postdoc work for a year at Harvard University under Professor Carl Lashley. He then went back to the University of Chicago to teach anatomy where he did not receive tenure and this is where he developed tuberculosis. While working with Lashley, Roger Sperry was asked to sleep in the same room as the rats and monkeys that he was conducting research on. Lashley believed that this allowed the researcher to get to know the animals better, and they also did not wear gloves while working with the monkeys. This all occurred in Orange Park, Florida at the Yerkes Research Center, and this is exactly where we trace back his tuberculosis. Sperry then took a year off in New York to recover from tuberculosis. During this time, he was asked to and agreed to speak at a growth symposium. The people of Caltech were there, and this is what got him started with Caltech, the end place of his career. While working with Caltech in 1981, he received the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine.
Dr. Sperry, Dr. Hubel, and Dr. Wiesel. You have, with your discoveries, written one of the most fascinating chapters in the history of brain research. You, Dr. Sperry, have given us more profound insights into the higher functions of the brain than all of the knowledge acquired in the 20th century. You, Dr. Hubel, and Dr. Wiesel, have translated the symbolic calligraphy of the brain cortex. The deciphering of the hieroglyphic characters of the ancient Egyptians has been denoted as one of the greatest advances in the history of philology. By breaking the code of the enigmatic signals of the visual system, you have made an achievement which for all time will stand out as one of the most important in the history of brain research. It is a privilege and pleasure for me to convey to you the warmest congratulations of the Nobel Assembly of the Karolinska Institute and to invite you to receive your Nobel Prize from the hands of His Majesty the King. Later in his life, by the 1980s, Roger Sperry began to shift his focus to the philosophical and societal implications of his ideas. He remained shy and reserved throughout most of his life. He died at the age of 80 of ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. It was on April 17, 1994, that we lost this incredible man. As you can see, Roger Sperry was phenomenal on a personal and professional level. He did things in psychology that have left a permanent imprint on the field. He is not someone that must be forgotten. That is why I made this video for you guys. I wanted you to understand who Roger Sperry is and to help spread the word. Because as you saw in the previous scenes of my vid, <laughs> um, nobody knows who he is. And that's a shame. And I, I want to change that. The following tune is a square dance piece in honor of a musical favorite of Roger Sperry's. regarding Roger Sperry and the many other extraordinary things he did, please visit www.google.com or visit your local library. Is it going? I was just turning it on. <laughs> Two parents, Florence Sperry and Francis Bushnell. <laughs> I should have started over. <laughs> Paul Weiss believed that the brain could revit, brain could revit, brain could revit, brain could revit, brain could revit. <laughs> Is that going to go on the gag rail? Um, How's it going? Yeah. Did you get all of that? <laughs> Roger Sperry also continued. I, why do I do that? Continued. Why did I do that? <laughs> In order to... Uh, Roger Sperry continued to collect research. Roger Sperry continued... What was I, what was I saying before? What did... Oh, birds, cats. <laughs> Josh. Mm-hmm. Continued to collect... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sperry continued to conduct research. <laughs> Sperry continued to... Oh okay. I'm the bunny of the earth. Can you fix the wire hanging by your head? This? Yeah. Oh, it's kind of funny. Um. It's just like dangling at your face. <laughs> Rogers. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
significantly, 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 significantly. What do you see here? Josh, what do you see here? <laughs> you have to do a massive saw. <laughs> it's like a screwdriver. Okay. Saw. Okay, I'll do my phone. Saw. Okay, I'll do my phone. Saw. Okay, I'll do my phone. Okay, my phone. Hi. She does not have a split brain. She mom, does not. Mommy, <laughs> mom, do you know who Roger Sperry is? Yes. Who? He's a quarterback for Notre Dame in 1964. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, that's Roger Perry. <laughs> somebody, somebody like that. April 20th, <laughs> minus three days, because it was April 17th. Wow. <laughs> Not that much, but like. <laughs> Can you go over there? It's just very sexual. Hello, my potty. As you saw in the beginning, nobody knows who the <laughs> it is. And oh, he yeah, like did yeah. so much. And Pavlov didn't even do classical conditioning. Pavlov was working with dogs to Alright, cut this off. <laughs> go take pills for your epilepsy. <laughs>